Today we're going to look at Oracle services such as Provable and Chainlink. Oracles get information that is not native to the blockchain onto the blockchain. Applications include generating random numbers, calculating the prices of certain assets, and also obtaining information about events that have occurred in the real world, for example, getting the score from a basketball game. Let's look at an example of how we can get the price of Ether onto the blockchain. We have real world exchanges such as Coinbase and Kraken, which know the price of Ether. The Oracle smart contract can reach out to these data sources and say, hey, what's the price of Ether? After aggregating all the responses, then the Oracle contract can tell other smart contracts about the price of Ether. So in this case, the contract is getting three responses from Coinbase, Kraken, and Binance and getting the average of them, which is 2,518. Then when a smart contract like MakerDAO wants the price, then the, the contract can just say, hey, it's $2,518. How exactly does Coinbase tell the contract that the price of Ether is 2500 Let's look at an example of how this flow might work using Provable as an example. First, a customer might call into the smart contract asking for the latest price of Ether. When the Oracle smart contract receives that call, then that contract can log an event or somehow notify Provable that the price of Ether needs to be updated. In that case, Provable might have a server running somewhere that will then query Coinbase to get the price. When the server gets the response back, then the, res then the server can update the contract with the price. When using Provable as an oracle, to get information from a data source, you use something called a Provable query. That query has two parts. The first part is the data source, for example, Wolfram Alpha or IPFS. And you also need to provide an argument which is applicable for that data source. So for example, if you want to get data from Wolfram Alpha, then you have to provide a Wolfram Alpha formula. If you want to get a document from IPFS, then you need to provide an IPFS multi-hash. For example, to get a random number from Wolfram Alpha, you could call Wolfram Alpha and pass it a query like this. To get the price of Bitcoin in euros, you could make a call to the rocktrading.com. After Provable obtains the results from the data source, then Provable will call back into your smart contract by calling the callback method, which is, which is exposed by the smart contract. We'll see this later when we look at the code. Provable offers some advanced features, such as returning an authenticity proof, which proves to the caller of the smart contract that Provable has not tampered with the result from the data source. There's also an option to encrypt the query, so no one can see which data source you're using. However, since these are more advanced features, I will not be covering them in this video. Now we're going to head over to the Provable documentation and look at an example of Oracle smart contract. When we go over to the provable documentation into the Ethereum quick start section, we can see examples of many different Oracle smart contracts, as well as detailed descriptions on how to use them. Let's look at the first example here called example contract. I've copied that example contract over into Remix, so it's easier to see the code. And now I'll explain to you how it works. So first, to use the provable smart contract, you have to create an Oracle which inherits from using Provable, which is what we're doing here. This Oracle is going to maintain the latest price of Ether in US dollars. So we have a string which represents the price of Ether in US dollars. When we first deploy the smart contract, the constructor is going to log an event saying that the constructor has been called and that we need to call update price to send the Provable query, which will get the latest price of Ether from some data source. So let's skip down to the bottom. So here is that update data price method. Whenever Provable reaches out to a data source to get information, that request is going to cost Ether. Otherwise, you could just spam an infinite number of requests until they run out of resources. Therefore, when the Oracle makes a request to Provable, that also is going to cost Ether. So in this case, before making the call to the data source, the Oracle is going to check if there is sufficient balance in the smart contract to make that request to Provable. So Provable get price is going to get that price that will need to be paid to Provable. If that price is greater than the balance in the Oracle, then the Oracle cannot send that request. So we're going to log an event saying the query was not sent and you need to add some ether to the Oracle to cover the fee for making that request. Otherwise, if the Oracle does have enough ether to send that transaction, then we're going to log this query saying the query has been sent and we're waiting for the answer. And then we're going to call a provable query with the URL that we want to obtain information from. So in this case, we're going to call the Coinbase API to get the price of Ether in US dollars. 
Finally, when Provable has received a response from Coinbase with the price, then Provable will call back into this contract using this callback method, and it's going to pass in the result, which contains the price. So first, we're going to check if the sender of this message is provable. And if it's not provable, then we're going to revert. Otherwise, we're going to update the price that the Oracle has with the results obtained from provable. And then we're going to log an event saying that the price has been updated. When I deploy this Oracle onto the RinkB testnet, I'm also going to add some ether to the smart contract to cover the cost of making multiple requests to Coinbase to fetch the price. In this case, I'll pass in 100 Finny. The first time that I check the price of Ether on this Oracle, the price is zero, which makes sense because the Oracle has not yet updated itself with the price. To do that, let's call update price, which is going to trigger Provable to send a request to the Coinbase API asking for the price. So when I click update price, this is going to cost me Ether and I'm going to confirm. So right now the call to update price is pending, which means that right now Provable is now querying Coinbase. And then when Provable obtains the result, it's going to call back into the smart contract with this callback, callback method, and then we're gonna update the price. So now we see that the transaction has finished, and let's try checking the price of the Ether. And right now it's still zero because we're still waiting for the callback to occur. I waited about 10 seconds more, and now when I check the price, I see that it's $2,600. Let's try updating the price again to get another new updated price. This is again going to cost more Ether. After waiting about another minute, I check the price again and I see it's been updated to 2,599. After a third call to update price, if I check the price of Ether again, I can see it's been updated to 2,604. We can also look at the Oracle on Etherscan to see the history. So in this case, I've constructed the smart contract and then I've made multiple calls to update the price and then Provable has called the callback to return the price to the Oracle. Looking at the event section, we can also see the exact data that's been returned by Provable. So let's go to the bottom. So first we can see that the constructor has been initiated. That's when I created the smart contract. Next, I called update price and then that, calls, that caused a new Provable query. And there we can see the text, which is that provable query was sent standing by for the answer. About a minute later, we received the callback from provable. And in this case, we were updated with the price, which was 2621. Then I made a second call to update the price, which resulted in a new event with a new provable query being sent. And if you remember, here we are with the second results of the callback with the price being 2,599. Then I updated the price for a third time and the result was 2,604. Thank you for watching and please let me know if you have any comments or suggestions.